Sophie, do you want to go inside? Huh? Do you? All right, let's go. Sit. Speak. Okay, all right, sit. Sit. Good girl. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, everybody. We're out here on the, uh, on the deck looking at some satellite images. Not images, but the, uh, the data coming down from the Inmarsat that covers the east coast of the United States here. Um, on the deck, we're shooting up through, put you where the antenna is, we're shooting up through this, uh, I don't know, what do you want to call it, like a canopy thing here? And really, today's experimentation is I just wanted to look at one satellite, which is the Inmarsat, whatever it's called, AOR, um, what is it, AOR East or something. And here's some of the, the, the satellite uh, carriers that are, that are available. Um, and you can also, uh, I'm going to be looking at some of the data messages here. Although this is not to um, not to look at really look at data messages, it's to uh, experiment between these these antennas, this uh, patch that I got from Newlec, and uh, my homemade. Let's see how many turns how many turns is that actually? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. It's so, around uh, roughly fourteen turns. Um, each one of these barrels here is uh, was printed on a 3D printer, and the, there's a seam here, and there's another seam right here. So I printed three of these barrels uh, on the 3D printer. They're 66 millimeters in diameter, 66 millimeters in diameter, and I forget what the inside is. Maybe it's uh, three millimeters less than that, something like that. And then I printed an inner tube, which is about that long, and it's pressed in and super glued. And the reflector here is a 200 millimeter circle made out of circuit board. I don't know how close I can get, but there's the feed point. Looks really ratty, doesn't it? But the feed point is a... Um, it's an SMA connector. Oh yes, there's the other... There's the sawbird. So what we're going to do is... Not so much decode stuff, although we'll be decoding stuff every, with every antenna, is to kind of look at how good the constellation is and also look at what the uh, carrier to noise is. We're going to pick one. We're, let, let's, we're going to pick that particular carrier, okay? And then what I'm going to do is the first thing, right now you're... You're, so, you're seeing about 32 dB signal to noise ratio, 33 uh, at, at times. And the reason for that is there's a tree on the other side of this. I, I don't have a convenient place to set this up right now. So I'm shoot, kind of shooting through a tree. So um, that's whatever, that's just the way it is. But we're going to be making some comparisons between um, the new Alec with no preamp, we'll see what the signal to noise is. We'll write it down here, and I'll snap uh, some some pictures here, and then I'll show them to you as as we go along in the finished video. All right. Uh, then we'll go with the helix with no preamp to see what the gain over the top of it is on average, because as I said, these these numbers are are bouncing around a little bit because that tree is moving in and out. So without the tree, and we're just clipping the top of the tree not not going right through the middle of it so i don't think there would be a huge increase but you can definitely see the meter moving out like right now it's uh 31 might go all the way down to 27 depends on how the wind is blowing and of course living out here in the country there's always a chainsaw going right chainsaw on that side and roosters on that side so you might hear those all right so let me set up let me shut this off and i'm going to set up uh, along the way and, and let you guys see what each antenna looks like. I'll record it on the pad and then uh, I will also take snapshots. Okay, so here we go. All right, you can see that everything is way down and that's because the gain of the preamplifier that was connected to the helix. So let me uh, let me bring that back up. 
and there's the carriers. Here's something interesting. For some reason, when I disconnect the antenna, I still have an ATB signal to noise ratio nine. I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe somebody could could tell me what what's happening there. But I'm going to screw the antenna back on. So we'll we'll just leave that because it's always the same. Hey, Birdie. Um. So you can see here now, we're seeing something like, I don't know, 15, 15 dB, 16, 17, 18. It moves around. Signal to noise ratio. Let's look at the constellation. All right, and the constellation is is pretty airy, I guess you would say. Um, the dots are not well confined. Uh, let's see here. What else? There are some messages being decoded. Uh, even well, let me let me clear those. Let me clear those. Control A and delete. And we'll go. I don't know what these messages mean. Some of them I can read. Some of them I can't. Control A and we'll hit delete. Hmm. Guess I can't delete those as easily. But there's new ones coming in all the time. Watch. Some kind of status messages. Okay. Some the guys out there who do this stuff. Who are well into well into this know exactly what's going on here. Let me look on this A cars again and see if any message popped up. Um, it hasn't, but it it would those messages take much longer to come through. So anyway, let's go back to uh, console. Let's see Alt Tab, and there's our carriers, and we're anywhere from 14 to 17. Oh, there's 18 dB signal to noise ratio. 19 and that's just with the patch and now that the gain is down you can really see the relative uh, amplitude here here with the uh, how strong the carriers are compared to one another so that's the patch looking up through a tree and I'm gonna snap let's see how do I snap the picture here I forgot go back to the home screen I think you can do a uh, Used to be a little camera on the top here. Well, I guess I don't have a very uh, recent version uh, of this. Let me uh, let me just stop for a second, and I will snap uh, a screen. Oh, there it is. There it is. Extras. Let's see if I if I get one. Okay, close. Okay, so let's move on and go. to the helix antenna and see if uh, we can that simple homemade helix can beat that 15 16 DB signal to noise ratio I'll be right back actually let's see I'm gonna do this so there's just it's just a little SMA and SMA oh, gotta take the uh, preamp off hmm, one-handed this isn't isn't so easy. Whoop. Well, I guess that, hope that survives. And we'll screw in our little barrel here. And we'll get that nice and tight. And then we'll go with the uh, screw this on. Okay, we haven't changed anything on the receiver, so let's take a look at how much stronger those are. Okay, you can see right away those are significant. Let's get that cable out here. Significantly stronger. We're up to, uh, what, 23, 26, at times 26, this 26. This thing has a much narrower beam width than that does. So I think it's looking through a very, a much smaller part of the tree. And uh, with a confined beam like that, it may be looking through a part of the tree that's thicker. So something like 23, 23 and a half, 24, all right. All right. Let's see what the constellation looks like. Okay, you can see the constellation is much tighter. Okay, and we're in the middle of uh, the pass band here, the yellow line showing that. Uh, let's see. And there's a message there from a seven Boeing seven sixty seven United Airlines, and a, another one coming, I guess, from a robot. I don't know. And 
those standard uh, messages are coming through quite nicely as well. All right, so there we are. Twenty. We had we had as high as uh, twenty five dB signal to noise ratio. As the wind blows things around up in that tree, gets it out of the way. So I'm going to stop right now and I'm going to hook in the preamp. That's going to take two hands. So let me do that and then um, we'll go from there. Oh wait, let's bring the preamp over here. Okay, so the preamp is made by uh, Newelec and it offers two ways of, of uh, bringing power into it. Either through the bias T or, and uh, or through an external USB and so I can tell what you're asking well, what the hell why are you using an external USB instead of the um, the bias T well for some reason either with this receiver or the R2 which I have strapped to the back of, of the uh, laptop neither one of them seems to be able to output the amount of current that this needs now this is spec at 180 milliamps is the current and that's that's kind of high and the reason I think for that is because there's a soft filter in there which is typically pretty lossy so the input comes through a low noise preamp a soft filter and then another output amp to drive the line mm -hmm. so I'm I'm thinking that's why it draws 180 mils now I saw I think it was George Stein asked how much on one of the forums how much current does it supply and Someone said 250 milliamps coming out of out of the radio. I hope I'm, I'm correct on that, but it will not uh, illuminate. Well, what it'll do is there's a power light. See how bright that power light is? It'll come on really, really dim, and then eventually fade off and shut down. And it'll be you'll see these carriers for an instant, um, but you, but they won't stay there. As I think the bias T is shutting down, so. Somebody could, uh, in the comments, uh, let me know about that. All right, so now we're going to go back to the stick to preamp in line. And um, I think that will wrap it up for this one this one part here in this little series. I better, uh, better snap a, a copy of this before we... Uh... Okay, good. All right, I'm going to shut down. Be right back. All right, here we are back amongst the chainsaws off in the distance. All right, so there we go. Signal-to-noise ratio is now varying between, I don't know, 30, 29, 30, all the way up to 33 dB. Uh, so what I'm doing is looking at the peak of each one of these. Let me grab a snapshot of this before I... Okay. Before I forget, and we'll go Alt Tab, and you can look and see how well defined those um, the constellation is. And there's, let's see, did any new messages come through here on this ACARS thing? Let's see. Control A. We'll get rid of, delete those. So there you have it. <clears throat> um, the new Alec patch. The uh, homemade helix, and uh, oh, see that? Some kind of message from the Boeing 767 just came through. And so, and here's the thing, you know, I've been playing around with this for a little while, um, trying different antennas, different lengths, and, and things like that. And I went to a site. Let's see. Hopefully, I have enough. Um, let's see. Let me see if I can do this. C O P P E N S. Nope. Coppins. And then just type in helical. Let's see here. And it should take you to this one J Coppins, John Coppins uh, helical antenna design. And this is where I got the information on how to build. The helix. There's a couple different pages with images and whatnot, but then there's a calculator, and it's as simple as 
throwing in the frequency 1544, 1544, and the number of turns that you want, and the spacing between turns, usually uh, between uh, up plus or minus a few tenths above and below a quarter of a, a wavelength. And uh, let's just say, let's just calculate that. And then we'll go down the screen and look, and it will tell you the, the uh, let's see, did it, did it go? Oh, total antenna length is going to be about a meter, right? 1.16 meters. The wavelength for 1544 is 194 so millimeters and the winding step and all that. And that's what you see right here. So I'm going to be experiencing. Oh, that's one thing. This is this is called uh, right hand circular polarization. And if you look from the reflector, here's the reflector, right? The reflector side of the antenna. I'm holding this in my hand, obviously. The turns go away from you clockwise, okay? In this this way, clockwise in the direction towards the end of the tunnel. If you wind it the other way, you won't see anything because the uh, antenna, the, uh, the satellite's using right-hand circular. So the next thing I'm gonna do is experiment with building my own patch antenna, which is gonna be a little bit different than that one. Um, I guess that's it. Thought you guys might enjoy seeing some of that. And listen <laughs> to the chainsaws in the background. Not too many birds came to visit us. Anyhow, oh, so, the, uh, yeah, I always uh, forgot the other thing. Um, where is that satellite, right? Well, for me, it's 191 degrees. So that's pointing at 191 degrees. And it's uh, about 42 degrees off of elevation. So... That's where we're going to. All right, so W1VLF. Just thought this might be interesting. Please subscribe if you can. I'm trying to get up to 5,000 subscribers. And leave a thumbs up if you thought this was interesting. And even more importantly than that, leave a comment in the bottom. Because I'm going to be experimenting with more antennas, including a dish. I have a small, um, it's almost one meter by one meter dish. So I'll be experimenting with that. Thanks a lot, everybody. W1VLF, signing out.